All right, I'm going to show you a couple little things about these uh, Voice of Music automatic changers and what typically occurs during the shipping process that's beyond anybody's control. But I'm going to show you guys how to reset your record player after shipping. Here we've got a Voice of Music record changer. This is what it looks like on the bottom. Um, and what we're concerned about is this function here. I'm going to be moving the, uh, the tone arm like this. Okay, that's why this movement's really critical. What it does is it trips a little tiny um, clip that's down inside here. It's right. Let's see if I can get some better light on this. It's right here. See, I can pull it out and push it in with my screwdriver. It's a little black hook. And what it does is it touches the edge of the, the, um, the collet of the, uh, the platter as it rotates and causes it to go into a cycle. That thing will pop out when the tone arms move towards the center or when you rotate the on-off switch to reject. Those are the two times that that little black um, catch will pop out. I'm going to show you what's happening on the bottom here. I'm going to be rotating the tone arm back and forth like this. Ro I'm moving it towards... Why is this so... I'm going to be moving it towards the spindle like this. Watch what happens underneath when that occurs. You see it kind of follows to that lever there. And what it does is it catches this this um, little finger. This finger right here. And it pulls it back. Which in turn goes down here and pulls that little claw. And initiates a cycle. So, as you can see this, when I rotate the... the uh, tone arm, how it will catch right there and push that little claw. So it's transfers down here to the uh, that little initiation claw that's on that on the cam. Alright, now something we want to look look for, I'm gonna um, initiate a cycle here manually and to do that let me back out. I'm just gonna rotate the cycling cam. From the bottom you want to rotate it clockwise. And that's a complete cycle. I'm going to uh, set down the tone arm, or the hold down lever, which has a lot of things that occur, but mainly what it's going to do is cause this little button right here to pop up. Um, let's see if we can get that to happen. I'm going to rotate the cam. see this little button right here pop up. See it pop up? So after a cycle and after shipping, sometimes they get stuck in that position and what you need to do is push this little button down. Let me show you where it's at. There in your mechanism. Hear it? That reset the mechanism. All right. Next thing you want to do is check that little button that's down inside the uh, spindle bearing. So I'm going to go to this record player and show you how to check that and make sure it's clean. We're going to pop off the, the uh, C-clip that holds your platter on. We're going to remove the platter. And it's going to take two hands, so bear with me here while I lift up. What I'm doing is I'm grabbing the platter here and with this hand over over on this side and I'm lifting it straight up. Okay, make sure you're
bearing didn't stick to the bottom. There's grease and sometimes that little bearing down inside there will stick here. And when you take off your platter, it'll fall on the floor. So make sure that's not there. All right, here's our little button. It's right here. Let's see if this will, if we can get it to, uh, oh, this is, the lighting is horrible. There it is. Okay, so do you see that little, little button right there? Right here. Did you see it pop out? Okay, I'm going to push it back in. Watch, you'll see it pop back out. See it come out? I'm gonna push it back in. I'm using the little tip of my screwdriver to push it back in. See it pop out? Okay, that happens when you turn the reject knob to reject or when the tone arm gets towards the center. That'll cause that little little catch to come out. And what it does is it catches this little cam on the bottom of your platter and that initiates this cycle and it causes the mechanism to rotate around this cog wheel and causes the uh, movements. Alright, so check that. Sometimes it gets dirty. I'm going to use um, acetone. I put a little bit in the cap here and I'm going to use a cotton swab and just apply it to this to that little um, tab You can hear it going back and forth in there. And I'm going to use a little um, dust off here to um, blow that liquid off and clean the bottom. All right, so there it popped out. Hopefully I can get this in a position where you can see it pop out. Okay, I'm going to push it back in. See it pop right there. All right, so that's what you need to do. Check and make sure that that little um, claw down inside here is popping out. Make sure it's clean and free to rotate back and forth. Um, when you put things back together, make sure your bearings are on your spindle. Um, you're going to want to probably push the, this um, cam wheel or yeah, yeah it's a idler wheel back out of the way so that the uh, rim of your platter can slide down into place. You see all that cam wheel sticking out right there? You want to push that idler wheel back in. I'm just using my screwdriver and I'm just pushing it, tucking it in as I rotate the wheel, the, rotate the platter and then it'll slide right on there. Alright, so let's see if we can I'm going to catch it so it doesn't set down on the felt pad of the platter. I'm going to move it towards the center. And you can hear the mechanism below engage. And the tone arm will swing out of the way. And it'll just keep doing this as long as this hold down lever is up and away. But if you move this down to the spindle and down, this time it should turn off when I go to, to um, reject. Tone arm will lift. Nothing falls, tone arm, the, the mechanism detected that, the tone arm set down and shut off. I understand there was a concern that when you opened it and turned it on, it was all, already in a cycle. Um, that's because, and, and the problem you thought was that the tone arm would sit down in the 45 record position. Well, it's doing what it's supposed to do. Watch, it'll go to that 10 in, uh, the 7 inch 45 position and set down. That's normal. Why? Because a record didn't drop. If a larger record had dropped that would have tripped your 12 inch record detector or your 10 inch record detector right here. Um, and if either of those sensed a record it would have told the tone arm to go to either the 12 inch or the 10 inch position. 
but as a fallback, as a default, if neither one of those are tripped, it knows that there must be a smaller record on there, so it goes to the 7-inch small record position. All right, that's how that works. Let me know how it turned out. Thanks.